Hi, today we're going to start a new series of NAS reviews and the first unit that we're going to test is this 10 gigabit unit by Azostore. So let's see what it can do. Today we're doing our first network attached storage review and it comes from a company which is relatively new to the market but has a major heavyweight parent company. As a store was founded in 2011 and is a subsidiary of the Taiwanese giant Asus, one of the largest computer and hardware manufacturers in the world. Unlike Asus, which has a whole range of computing and electronic products, as a store focuses specifically on network attached storage solutions. Although it might not be as familiar a name in the industry as QNAP or Synology, since its creation, Azastore became a viable alternative to those brands and the drive that we will be testing today called the AS4004T is not only competitive with some of the offerings from those brands, it is possibly a leader in its class, at least in some respects as we will see later on. Before we start, an important note. There is no way that we can cover all of the different aspects of this unit. Covering everything will require several lengthy videos and possibly a lot more knowledge than we have about networks, so this review will focus on what we have found to be relevant for photographers, videographers, and content creators, and we should share more links for more information for people who want to dive deeper on the full review on lensway.com. Let's start by taking a quick look at the unit externally. The AS4004T has four 3.5-inch bays and is quite compact, measuring 22 centimeters, about 8.5 inches deep, over 16 by 16 centimeters, or 6.2 inches in height and wide. It has a pretty substantial power brick, which we connected to a UPS, which is highly recommended, but more on that later. On the front of the unit, we have the four disk bays. We marked each disk in each bay the user configurable power switch, several indicator lights including a power LED, system status, network indicator, USB indicator, and a separate indicators for all four drives. You also have a USB 3.1 port, and finally you have a magnetic plastic diamond-shaped cover for the drives. On the back of the unit you can find the Kensington lock, the power connector, a tiny reset button, dual 1 gigabit RJ45 connectors which can be used for link aggregation, these sit next to a fairly quiet 120mm fan and the all important single 10 gigabit per second RJ45 connector and finally a USB 3 connector. The unit is sold without any drives and you can use whatever drives you want and you have several options on how to use them in the unit including single, JBOD, RAID 0, RAID 1, 2, 5, 6 and 10. As we will see we were somewhat conservative with our own build and chose RAID 5. As for the drives that we have used for this build, we contacted the good people over on Seagate who hooked us up with four of their 14 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro drives for a total of 38 terabytes of user accessible storage in RAID 5. Unlike consumer drives, these units are designed from the ground up to work in demanding network environments, handling high workloads, more heat and vibration with air recovery and specific NAS power management. Another huge benefit of the Iron Wolf Pro series is that it includes a rescue data recovery service plan for two years, in addition to the standard five years warranty on the drive itself, which can save you thousands of dollars in data recovery if the worst does happen and your drive crashes, which is rare but can happen. Now we want to share some of our installation experience with the unit. We do want to mention that we have been out of the NAS game for a long time, so some of the stuff that might be trivial for more experienced NAS users might be new to us. Right out of the bat, we made a mistake and used some screws to connect the drives to the holders that go into the unit. If we spent a few more seconds reading the instructions, we would have realized that the unit has tool-free drive installation. That is for the 3.5 inch drives. The 2.5 inch drives do need screws that come with the unit. Anyway, even with the screws, the physical installation went smoothly. The initial software install was fairly quick, although there are quite a few different pieces of software that you need to install and it would have been nice if there was a more simple way of installing all of them in one go. There are also a number of things that we needed to do to make the unit more functional and could have been great if they came as default. 
The first was to give Windows access to the drive as well as creating a drive letter for the unit in Windows. Again, a simple wizard would be helpful for less technical users here. Next, in order to significantly improve the performance of the NAS, we needed to change some settings which we got from as a store, including changing the MTU in the network interface of the NAS to 9000 and the Jumbo packet to 9014 on the device manager on each of our computers. This dramatically increased the NAS speed in our testing. Now let's talk about performance. And here we measured several things and got some interesting results. First, we used two synthetic benchmark software, the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, as well as Crystal Disk Mark. On the Blackmagic Test, we got a score of just over 200 megabyte per second write, which is quite mediocre for a fast quad RAID 5 array over 10 gigabit per second, but on the other hand, over 600 megabytes per second read, which is very respectable. Crystal Disk Mark produced a little bit different result with just under 580 megabytes per second read, but somewhat higher, 257 megabytes per second write. For our real world test, we transferred our 4.9 gigabyte test folder with a video project files and got an average speed of 454 megabytes per second from the NAS to the computer and a speed of 217 megabytes per second from our computer to the drive. We also did quite a bit of video editing from the unit in Premiere and so far so good. We had no issues or slowdown working on 4K files from our Sony cameras, although higher resolution or faster frame rates videos might text the unit and so will probably working on large files at the same time from more than two different machines. Now we come to what we consider one of the weak points of the system and we say system here because we believe that this isn't as a store's fault and this is the noise level. As we have mentioned, the unit has a 120 mm fan, which you can control and even turn off completely from the software, although we don't really recommend that if you want to keep your drives running cool. The NAS is rated at 32 decibels and that seems very likely to us. We didn't test the unit without the drive so it's hard to tell but it isn't very noisy. However, if you're going to use large capacity fast spinning drives like the 7200 RPM 4 14 terabyte Iron Wolf Pro drives that we packed into the unit, you should be prepared for quite a bit of sick and other noises. At the moment there is just no way around this with these types of mechanical drives. You can always go with solid state drives, Seagate even has a new dedicated NAS SSDs called the Iron Wolf 110 SSD series, but at the moment you are limited to about 4 terabyte per drive and pricing is significantly higher than comparable mechanical drives so this is not a viable option for most users. What we have done since we recorded all of our voiceovers next to our computer and need a noise free environment is move the NAS to another room. This is a fantastic solution, although one that isn't an option for everyone, which you can do fairly easily since using Cat7 cables allows you to get the same speed from the drive even a few rooms away. In our case, we just drilled a hole in the wall and placed the unit in a small storage room under our stairs. Close enough so we can always check on it if we need to, but with a thick wall between us so that the unit isn't heard in our room at all. This is something that you typically can't do with a direct attached storage solution based on Thunderbolt 3 for example, like the ones that we have tested here last year, as they are limited to about 2 meters or 6.5 feet of cable at best. Let's quickly discuss apps. Like most other NAS solutions on the market, as a store has an app store and although it might not be as rich as some of the competition, it does have quite a few apps that you can download including ones which can sync to Dropbox, Google Drives, create FTPs, use Flex for media and download managers, install different types of servers and programming tools and much much more. We didn't have a need for most of these apps so far and we only tried a small number and really had an issue with the surveillance center which could not find our cameras. We're still trying to figure this one out with as a store. One important point that many users tend to forget is that on its own a NAS is not a backup solution, although RAID can offer some level of physical drive failure redundancy. We always recommend that a NAS will be backed up to a different unit if possible one which is off-site, or be used to backup data that is stored on your computer or on a different storage unit. 
we are currently using this NAS as our main storage pool for two different computers located on two different floors connected using two 10 gigabit per second switches. And we back up to a direct attached storage unit, which we manually connect and disconnect every few days. The unit does come with a large number of backing up options for external storage as well as cloud-based backup storage that you can see on the screen. Besides regular backup, other store has a relatively new feature called Snapshot. Introduced in late 2018, it uses the BTRFS file system and allows the user to manage, schedule, create and restore snapshots of their data on the drive. Note that at the moment there is no way to save snapshots to an external drive which could have been useful. As a store did not invent this technology, incremental backup of this type have been around for a while and are offered by many other manufacturers, but it is nice to have and we're going to reformat our system into BTRFS file system soon to start enjoying the benefits of this feature. As we have mentioned, we highly recommend that you also protect your NAS using UPS. We did that and if you have one which has USB, you can also set up the NAS to power down if the UPS battery is getting low on power. One of our favorite features in the unit is called EasySync. This was also introduced by Azure Store in late 2018 and it turns your NAS into a personal cloud storage similar to services such as Dropbox or Google Drive, although not necessarily as advanced, but with one significant difference. You have the option to access all of your data from any device anywhere in the world without costly monthly or yearly payments. As long as the NAS is up and running and the EasySync service is working, you're good to go. In our opinion, this service alone is a game changer for many content creators, especially those who travel a lot and need access to large libraries of files which they can take with them and can place on a regular cloud without paying a lot of money for it. We tried EasySync in a number of scenarios working wirelessly on our local network to the Azure Store app on our Google Pixel 2 XL unit and we discovered that the images and most videos from the server work without any delays. Some larger 4K videos did have some issues though but there could be many reasons for this that has nothing to do with Azure Store and we have been talking to Azure Store to see if there is a way to improve on this. Trying to access our content away from our local network presented more of a challenge. On fast Wi-Fi and with good mobile connection, we had no issues accessing our images and smaller video files, but higher quality, larger video files and most 4K files didn't really play without countless starts and stops. If you only want to watch HD videos, still images or files remotely through the EasySync, this feature is a life-changing solution that can let you access dozens of terabytes of data wherever you are and have connection to an internet. Something that in our view is worth more than the price of the unit itself to many professional photographers. Just to be fair, Other Store is not the first company to offer this type of private cloud solution. QNAP and other companies have this feature as well. However, the EasySync in combination with other features of the AS4004T, including the 10 gigabit per second connection alongside the price, makes this unit really stand out in our view. One more interesting feature that we have not tried yet, but we feel we need to mention is called My Archive. It basically turns the NAS into a sort of an ultra-fast hard drive docking station. In this way, you can use hard disks as removable storage archives. Plug in an archive when you need it and swap it out for a different archive when you don't and do all of this without turning off the NAS. This is a cool feature, but for our users at the moment, it isn't necessary and we don't want to sacrifice one of our current drives on the unit for this purpose. Luckily, if we decide that we do want to do this, we can connect another Azure Store unit and use one of its drives for My Archive. Talking about connecting another Azure Store unit, you can also do this to expand your NAS storage, which is pretty cool if we ever need more storage than we have at the moment. The AS4004T is an extremely versatile unit and we have only scratched the surface of what it can do in this review. We feel that the combination of good performance, rich feature set, 
three years of warranty, which is above the norm for the category, the really useful EasySync private cloud solution, and the extremely affordable price of around $360 for a four bay unit, which supports 10 gigabit per second connection, make this a clear winner in our book. Just don't forget that in order to benefit from its 10 gigabit per second speed, you will need supporting hardware, which is still quite expensive, although prices keep getting down. There are very few drawbacks that we have found so far with the unit. The software still needs some polishing and it would be nice if there was an actual controlling software instead of the browser only ADM interface. We would love some sort of a buffer for the easy sync when playing videos. This might also depend on the video player we used VLC mobile. And of course, faster write speeds from the drive would be highly appreciated, although at this price level, that might be the maximum that you can get from the hardware at this point in time. At the end of the day, we can easily recommend the AS4004T for any photographer, videographer, or content creator looking for a single quad bay fast and cost effective 10 gigabit per second NAS solution. It will even work fine for two simultaneous editors, although we can't really vouch for more than that in a professional environment. But if we take into account its limitations, it is possibly the most attractive budget option on the market in its class at the moment. So that was our look at the AS4004T NAS 10 gigabit drive by Azostore. You can read the full review with all of our test results on lensvid.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to find more videos just like this. See you next time.